Sports unites people with a common language, and that's according to my guest Dave Clausen. He is the head of Athletes in Action, an organization that works with athletes, professional and amateur. Dave, welcome to 100 Holly Street. <laughs> Thanks. You come from an athletic background. You wanted to be in the NBA. When did you realize you were good at basketball? Well, it was that I wasn't good at other things. I wasn't going to be an Einstein. I didn't look good enough. No one would date me. So that, what am I going to do? So I started this athletic thing. I was faster than people. I could jump higher than them. Oh, people paid attention to me. Uh, the odd time I'd get an award, I'd be in front of people. I'd hear the claps, great job. I'm like, that's me. And so there, I started looking around. What is it that I'm the best at? And so when Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, I'm like, I got to play basketball because that's the ticket. So you, you, you excelled at basketball. You got into college. Oh, and uh, things were going good. Yeah, they worked out pretty good. Good enough that one day uh, my athletic director called me in the office and said, Dave, he said, if you keep doing what you're doing, he said, you might actually be an all-star. I was like, an all-star? He said, yeah, an all-star in the league. I remember the day the uh, award ceremony came up in our um, uh, college. It was the end of the year. There I am. I'm waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, Athlete of the Year, Okanagan College, Dave Clausen. Well, when you're an athlete and you receive something, you got to pretend like you don't deserve it or you don't. So I just strolled up. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But deep down, I was going, yeah, baby. He's feeding the eagle, Oh, right? my gosh. This is it. Man, I grew 18 inches taller. Then next, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'd like to give this award um, All-Star with the Totem Conference, Dave Clausen. Oh, man, thank you. I don't deserve it. Yes, I do. I don't deserve it. Yes, I do. <laughs> then I waited, ladies and gentlemen. This award's never been given out in the history of our college. This person's received this All-Canadian Award, one of the top 10 junior college basketball players in Canada, Dave Clausen. <clears throat> I'd arrived. I had a full-page spread article in the paper. Me. With the basketball, I was going somewhere. Finally, I was going to be the NBA player I ever wanted to be. And now you're excelling you oh, know, in goodness. basketball. Third year, though, yeah, injury. bad injury, yeah. a bad injury. Yeah, it was an ankle injury, and I couldn't recover from it. Now it would be a high sprain, and people would probably work through you. But in those days, you just basically sprayed something on it, or you know, I couldn't do it. I couldn't jump anymore. I couldn't do that. And I just was searching. What's wrong with me? You see, my identity had been so tied up in how I performed. Every time I saw my name in the paper, it was like, Dave, look what you've done. Look at who you are. I'd walk across the campus, and people knew who I was. BMOC, big man on campus. Mm. And now... Yeah, it's all taken away now. It was. Yeah. Your dream has been crushed. But that ended up being something that would turn you towards God. I had a girlfriend, and she brought me to church. When I walked in there, uh, I was so scared. I knew nothing. But it seemed like every time that that person spoke up front, he was talking about me. I'd look around, how do you know me? How do you know that I was, oh my goodness, what's wrong with me? And you know, a lot of people have a lot of questions about the church, and they may be angry about it or frustrated with it, but actually it's the only place that I've found you can get answers to your questions. So how did you then turn to Jesus and make that decision uh, to follow him? My friend, he was a good friend of mine. He goes, Dave, you know, he said, you've been looking at this uh, Christianity thing for a while. You've been asking all these questions. He says, and I'm tired of it, to be honest with you. He said, uh, either Jesus is who he says he is, or he's not. That's it. He said, but if he is who he says he is, you've got a problem. He says, but if he's not, then you don't have to worry about anything. Just go live your life. And I was like, why would you say that to me? I didn't like statistics. I didn't like competition. I, didn't, I knew what there was something wrong here, and I had to make a decision. And so I remember driving out of his driveway one night, top of the hill in Ender, BBC, and went, Lord, I don't know if you can help me. I don't know if you can do anything, but I really need something in my life. I think I need you. And you know what? I prayed to ask Christ into my life, and nothing happened, or it felt like it. But, you know, I did it for one reason, one reason only, because I was so injured, I wanted to get back on the, on the court. I needed him as a, a lucky rabbit's foot. Okay, so it wasn't that you had come to this conclusion that oh. you needed a savior. Oh, you, I knew I was lost. You needed help to get to your no, dream there. No, I knew I was lost. I was lonely. I was desperate. I knew all those things. I saw it every day in the mirror when I woke up in the morning. I just, didn't, I just liked the other stuff. It fed me. And if I didn't have it, I thought I had to go back to it. So if this God guy, he can help me get it back, I want it. 
And I remember going to the first practice, and I caught the ball, or I thought I caught it. It went right through my hands and hit me in the face. And I said these words I've said so many times before I became a believer. Jesus Christ. And it was like someone grabbed me and stopped me in my tracks. And I heard this voice. Don't take my name in vain, Dave. I was like, what? Who said that? I kept playing. It was the end of practice, and something else happened, and I reacted the same way. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Don't take my name in vain, Dave. So you made that decision to follow him. And so your dream did come true. You got to the NBA with the Vancouver Grizzlies, who are, now, of course, now gone. The Raptors, of course, still in Toronto. Yeah. And you now have a real heart and passion to help athletes come into relationship with Jesus. Oh, it's more than that. I just love helping men get over the hurdles of life. Like, why struggle? Play free. I'd love to see a man who could just play free, live free, do his business free, uh, be a parent free, uh, live in this world free. You see, Jesus took me out of a jail that I was in. It was anger jail. It was frustration. It was trying to prove to the world that I was worthwhile. That's what I want to give men. It doesn't matter, really matter what sport you're in, but it's this thing that you, we do because we're angry, we're lonely, we're tired, we're angry, all these other things. And I want to get rid of that. You don't need to play like that anymore. Are the guys open to it? Well, I think everyone's open to... Uh, I mean, the athletes, because, I mean, they live this life, and some of them making millions of dollars. They got all this fame. and yeah. are, Do they have an emptiness, too? I think they're closer to it, to be honest with you. Why? You because when you, when you don't need money anymore, as uh, a friend of mine said when I asked him what the biggest issue in uh, professional uh, basketball is, he said availability. I said availability. He goes, yeah, that's the greatest struggle, Dave. Available of anything, anytime, anywhere. He said, we, on one signature, we get everything. What else do we need? Mm. And when you have everything that everyone else is trying to get there, you just got it quicker with a signature. Now what? You're still empty. You're still lonely. There's something missing. Now what? How do I deal with my children, my spouse? How do I deal with a teammate? How do I deal with the injury? How do I... No one teaches you that. Or you live your life backwards in the sense you have this great career and yeah. notoriety, and then you retire it. 35, 40, whatever it is, and got to continue to live. I'm lost. I used to do this. This is how people define me. People aren't phoning me anymore. People don't know him, um, me. And so what is the rest of my life like? What's my destiny? What's my purpose in life? It used to be this. It's not anymore. And I just feel that you have always had a destiny, a destiny of purpose and value with the Father that made you and created you. And that's really what I want to get across to men. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. You know, if you're looking for significance, whether you're a professional athlete, uh, a stay-at-home mom, or whatever your profession might be, or your stage of life, we all have to come to that decision that, you know, is Jesus who he says he is, or is he not? And if we come to the conclusion that he is, we need to make a decision to follow him. And if you want to do that right now, give us a call, 1-866-273-4444. Our prayer lines are always open. We'll be right back.